Welcome back, monsters. Tonight, I have five sinister, true encounters of the infamous Dogman for you. Watch out through the windows. Enjoy. I was driving around really late one night. It was probably one in the morning, and I was getting back from a friend's party. Now, the neighborhood I live in is obviously residential, but we're surrounded by a lot of thick woods. There's a long stretch of road, maybe a mile or so. There's thicket on both sides of the road that separates the residential area to another. I was driving this road heading back to my place, and I probably had about three minutes until I hit the general neighborhood. As I'm driving, I noticed some eye shine coming from the right side of the road, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. I figured maybe it was a deer, but as I started to get closer, Within seconds, I noticed it was the hugest wolf head I've ever seen in my life, staring at me from the thicket. What scares me is we don't have wolves around this area, and the thicket and bramble is tall, and so for this thing's head to be above it, this thing would have to be well over eight feet. As I get closer and I drive past it all, I literally saw it was a giant wolf head staring at me through the bramble, or at least just its head sticking out. What's weird is I've looked at other Dogman encounters and other reports about having glowing eyes, but this seemed like a typical eye shine, like you would if you were to shine your headlights onto a deer. It just didn't feel right, though. The head was too huge, and there's no reason any wolf head should be up eight feet off the ground in the middle of thorns and brambles. It still gives me the creeps to think about it. Oh, and I'm sure it doesn't help, too, that we're surrounded by a national forest in the entire area. So there's that. This happened to me in July of 1985. I was living in Kentucky at the time at an undisclosed location. My family has owned property that's been in my family's generation for a very long time. That is surrounded by a bunch of woods. Let me give you a lay of the land. In the front of the house, it's open yard in our driveway, which is roughly 300 yards, and leads to a gravel road. To the left side of our house is our vegetable garden, which is about 16 feet by 20 feet, and then I would say about another 100 yards of open pasture, and then wood line. Behind our house is probably about 20 to 30 feet, and then more wood line. Now the woods behind the house keeps going and connects with the woods on both sides of the house and pasture. There's also about a hundred or so yards of pasture on the right side of the house, as well, followed by more woods. About fifty yards out on the right side of the house, past the vegetable garden, I have a small tool shed where I keep all my stuff. One night, my wife and I were inside eating dinner and it was around 8 p.m. I remember because it was still sunny outside but getting dark. I started to get an ominous feeling and I noticed the hair starting to stand up on my neck and arms. Now, I should note that I had the windows open for a breeze, and out here in Kentucky, you could hear the wildlife. I noticed that it was pretty quiet outside. Something wasn't quite right. Of course, I wasn't going to tell my wife, so I just brushed it off and continued to have dinner when, not even five minutes later, I hear this bang crash sound by the shed. From where I'm sitting, we have a window in which I could perfectly see the shed in the garden. Even in the dark, I was able to make out and see that there wasn't anything visually out of place, which I thought was odd. I decided to go and grab my twenty-two, which I keep by the door, and went to investigate. I just remember walking over to grab my rifle, and right as I put my hand on the door, it's almost like my instinct kicked in. My entire body just told me don't go out there, whatever you do. It was the strangest sensation I've ever felt in my life. It's as if I was frozen in fear. So I sat there for a minute and waited. I didn't hear anything outside that wasn't normally there, and it continued to stay perfectly silent. So much so that you could hear a pin drop. My wife is now scared because she totally senses it too, and I go and I decide to close up all the curtains and lock all the doors. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I just felt in every fiber of my being that it wasn't safe to be outside. Me and my wife decided to go in our bedroom and try and get some sleep for the night. I remember closing my eyes, but there's no way me sleeping was going to happen anytime soon. I must have dozed off because the next thing I remember is my wife waking me up and hushing me. Ended up coming out a panicked whisper. 
she was telling me that there's somebody outside of our window. Now where we live, I know that's impossible since we are miles away from the nearest neighbor. I turn to look over out the window. Just like out of a horror movie, I see the silhouette of a wolf standing upright in our window. The moon was out that night because it was illuminating this thing. Whatever it was, it was standing outside our window. It had sharp pointy ears with little tufts of hair on the top, and its head was massive and shaped like a wolf. Now something to note is that our window was like six to seven feet off the ground. So this thing had to have been tall and standing to even get its head in the whole window view. We have thin curtains that cover our window, just enough to where you can't see anything outside. But if something were to stand in the way, you could definitely see a silhouette. It wasn't even more than five seconds until I first saw it that it started growling and it was so deep and guttural, I'm honestly surprised I didn't urinate myself right there. Then it reached out with its hands and started tapping on the window like it wanted us to let it in. My wife is entirely hysterical, and I run out of the room to grab the rifle from earlier. I run back to the front door and grab the gun, not caring what my instincts tell me, and open the front door and run outside to the side of the house where this thing is. It takes me maybe five to ten seconds to run out to where the window is, and it's nowhere to be seen. I'm looking all around our house, but I'm not seeing anything. I don't have a flashlight with me, and the only lights are coming from inside the house and the porch light is just barely illuminating where I am outside the house. I stood outside for a minute or two looking for this thing, and I didn't see anything. What freaks me out is my hair was still standing up, and the forest was still quiet. After about a minute, I walked back in the house and checked up on my wife, who was still hysterical, and asked her what just happened. She said it just left. Her and I weren't sure what to do at that point. So we just sat there and waited for this thing to come back. It never did the rest of the night, and I don't think her and I fell back asleep until about five in the morning. This was a long time ago, but that was the only time I've ever encountered such a beast. I've never encountered anything like it since, and hope that I never do. I used to work for the sheriff's office back in Lafayette County in the 2000s. I've since moved on from there. I live in California now and don't experience anything like what I did in that county, specifically the tiny town of Taylor. We used to get calls in all the time, all hours from the night, from some of the more rural residents of strange beings trying to break into people's houses. These beings were described as shaggy, dark, and wolf-like, but standing up on two legs. Many have called and claimed they're being invaded by the Rougarou, and they're not sure what to do. We have sent multiple officers out on location on the suspect of a large animal trying to break in. We've had some of our officers experience things they can't explain, and have had run-ins with the supposed Rougarou themselves. I've even heard stories of these bastards terrorizing people by pushing their faces up against the glasses of homes and looking in, baring their teeth at children and trying to scare people. We even received much darker phone calls. Phone calls involving people panicking, telling the operator this thing is breaking into their house. Officers get there and there's just blood and no one around. Traces of a struggle and break-in, but nothing. Or even worse, other times we've had officers show up to several bodies partially eaten. This creature isn't a joke, and I don't know why it's such a problem in that county. One of our officers told me about how when he showed up to one of the calls, an unknown upright canine attacked his vehicle and almost killed him had he not shot at it. I've heard other officers say they will see it fleeing from the property as soon as they pull up. Or even worse, these things are still in the house. Fortunately, many of the calls we receive are just witnesses seeing these things on their property or looking in their window. In places that are more rural, you'll encounter many more people who have had their livestock picked off entirely. There was an older gentleman who lost every livestock he had. Another gentleman had 16 goats and well over two dozen chickens. All were brutally slaughtered within two months' time. I couldn't even tell you how many dogs and cats go missing on the daily. This territory is theirs. These wolf creatures rule these parts. I know you might not believe a lot of what I'm telling you, but these are phone calls and conversations I experienced for several years, and it didn't stop. I was forced to believe the issue at hand, 
The only thing bizarre I can really tell you is along with some of the more gruesome cases we dealt with, some unknown branch of the government was usually involved in the aftermath. There were several cases we found bodies, either attacked and mutilated by one of these things or eaten to death. Both cases are immediately revoked from our county's jurisdiction and are instead considered a government threat. We are then dismissed from the case. I don't know what's going on, but people are dying. All of that county belongs to them. Don't go there to visit. Don't go sightseeing. Stay far away from that county. This happened to my grandmother back in the early 80s. My grandmother at the time was in her 70s and a part of a senior living center far outside of Lexington, Kentucky. My grandmother wasn't very mobile, and so there would be some days where they would have a special bus that came to pick up the disabled seniors and take them out to do things. I can't remember the name of what she said the service was, but it doesn't matter. This service would swing by the center every week, and I believe she said this occurred in the later part of July. She says she can't remember where exactly they were going, but they were in part of the road where it was heavily forested on both sides, and before she knew it, this horrible-looking wolf creature was attacking the bus, trying to get in. It jumped on the bus and tried to break the glass to get in, but not before the bus swerved off the road and practically crashed. The crash was pretty heavy and several of the seniors were injured, but none fatal. After the bus swerved and crashed, this wolf creature had broken through the windshield and was trying to get to the driver and the rest of the bus. She said that everyone was screaming and that the driver was trying the best he could to ward this thing off. Shots were then fired before this thing could fully make its way into the bus. There was a cop on the side of the road that she guessed happened to drive by and see this taking place. The wolf creature ran off into the woods and you could hear it howling. This wonderful officer came to our rescue and saved us from this creature that was straight out of hell. The bus was destroyed. While many of them were getting medical care from the EMTs that came, they all had to wait for an emergency to come and transport them back to the senior center. Luckily, no one had experienced anything more than just some bruising and soreness. She went on to tell me that it wasn't even two weeks later that three of the seniors that were on that same bus trip with her had all died of strange circumstances. She said they all three got sick at about the same time and eventually passed in only days. She says the actual rent and cause of death was cardiac arrest. There was only nine of them on the bus along with the driver. There are things that she can't explain and she says that day will always be with her. She's had to seek therapy from it since and says it caused mild forms of PTSD. She never watches horror movies or anything like that, but I've tried to show her different werewolf movies to see if she could show me what these creatures looked exactly like. The one I remember she really had a reaction to was the end scene in the Van Helsing movie, the scene where he becomes a werewolf and fights this monster vampire. She says it looks similar to that, but much leaner, but just as scary and as fierce looking. She said she hasn't yet seen anything that has been spot on to what she saw that day. Just a few that were close. She said the closest thing to what the face looked like was the face of the Van Helsing werewolf. My grandmother passed about 10 years ago, but I always wanted to share her story, and so I had written it down multiple times and had taken notes. It's something I'll always hold of hers. Take care. Hello. I haven't reached out to you in weeks. It's been a while since everything at the ranch happened. Do you remember me telling you about the wolves and how they've taken over the property? Well, we had the government show up and try and prove to us how they can handle this issue. After we were released from forced imprisonment in our house, we were informed the issue had been dealt with. Just as fast as they stormed our property, they were gone. No trace, just gone. The only problem is the issue had not been dealt with. It was much, much worse. That next night, we had heard screams and howls. More so than we've ever heard before. It sounded like there was a pack of 50 of them. It sounded like we were surrounded. Me and the owner hid in the house all night for fear of them coming in and eating us. We barely slept that night, but morning eventually came. The noises went on all night long but eventually subsided in the early morning. As soon as sun broke, 
we decided it was probably a good idea to see what shape our farm was in. As soon as we stepped outside the house, the smell of blood and wet dog was thick in the air. We checked on the animals. Everything was dead. I mean everything. It looked like a fucking massacre. If this would have been a raid by pirates, I would have believed you. It was much worse. Much more violent. All the chickens. All the goats. All the horses. Dogs. Cats. Everything. Ripped apart. Torn to pieces with gore. Blood. And guts. Everywhere. The smell was so overpowering. We had seen everything that needed to be seen. I remember sitting at his dinner table and making that hardest decision he's had to make. It was time to uproot and abandon the ranch. These creatures have not only taken everything from my boss, but they've stripped us both of peace and safety. There was nothing left but fear. We decided it would be best not to spend another night there. Because who knows if we were going to be the targets next. As we loaded up and left the property, it was roughly late afternoon. As we were making our way down the long driveway, looking back at the ranch we spent so much time in, there were several sheriff vehicles at the entrance with several police officers stopping us. They demanded we get out of the vehicle and detained both of us immediately. We weren't told anything. I have no idea what had happened to the owner's car and all of our belongings. Once we were taken back to the station, we were put in a room where they come in and question you. A pale-looking man in a black suit walked in. He looked like he worked for the Secret Service, just like the other black-suited gentleman that appeared on the ranch days prior. He sat down and calmly said that we're not allowed to speak of anything we saw at the ranch, or tell anybody anything. If we did, the consequence would be severe. He got up and left, and we were then released. I've been staying with a friend a few towns over. The owner, I think, is moving back to another state. I'm doing this anonymously. At this point, I have no idea what there is left to do. I'll keep you up to date as much as I can. Wish me luck. Hey guys, those were some strange stories indeed. If you have any stories of your own that you would like to submit for narration, please submit them to the email below. Have a great night. See you later.